What's going on everybody? Blazing here. Welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video. And today I want to talk about what you can do for your account to progress in Centranos, right? We all obviously want to try to get the new flashy flashy endgame champion, right? Which is Carnage. Now, for us to do that, we've got to basically clear Centranos. We gotta get the candles and you know, we gotta kind of move up through out the way. Um but what is that actually going to take, right? What do you need to do uh, for your account to be able to progress? Now, last rotation, I went 100 out of 101. I fell short of one, which means it's going to end up taking me a little bit longer to get Carnage. Now, it is what it is. I couldn't do it. Um, I faced some challenges. But facing some of those challenges and talking to a lot of you guys, um, I have came up with a list of like the top, Five, and there is one thing that we're going to touch a little bit on. Uh, so maybe six things, right, that you need to do to progress in your account or that you should be doing to progress for your account in Centranos. So let's get into it. So the number one thing that you need to do or that you should be doing, um, and I know I'm going to use the word need and should interchangeably. It's all really should because you, if you really want to progress in it, you can. But the number one thing you should be doing is every rotation planning ahead. Now, what does that mean? Well, coming in, you see I have seven out of eight keys left within my three hours. But you're going to see here, I kind of came into Soul Cross first and skipped a lot of everything else, right? I looked at what Soul Cross had because I knew I can clear just about everything else um, except you know, for Soul Cross, and I knew that the one stage I had a weakness on last rotation was S20, which you can see right here, I did take down, but I need to know what is going to be my diff most difficult challenge here, right? So one of the things you got to do is you got to come in and you got to take a look and, you know, see what champions are on the stages that, you know, you're looking to progress into, right? Take a quick peek. You don't need to spend all day, but look at it and say, okay, I've got enough champions on this floor that I can use. Um, this one right here, I've got enough champions. I think I can use some of these. That's not going to be a problem right here. Okay. Looks like I got a couple of them, but on the stages that you're more undeveloped, right? And so for my account, I really actually had a hard time on S six. I had to actually level out five new champions, right? None of these guys were actually leveled or fully leveled and mastered on my account or built. So I actually had to build. So number one is going to be planning ahead, right? Make sure that you are looking at what is to come. Try to plan a path ahead, right? You're going to see here, I missed quite a bit of this stuff over here. Um, and same thing here. Now I am using all my keys every day, right? If I can't progress in through while I'm not progressing, I'm using my keys somewhere else, right? Whether it be in Cobble Market or whether it be in one of these other stages as a filler while I'm still trying to progress here. And you know what, if I need to build some champions for some of those other stages, I may just digress and go back to um, normal. But planning ahead is going to be number one. So take a little bit of time, look at the stages, look at where you had a hard time last time and see what you need for your account this rotation. Number two, number two is going to be champion development. And this is a huge one. Um, now you're going to look at my account, right? If we just go to see how many six star champions I have, both in my master vault and my reserve vault, you're going to see I have 375 out of, I believe there's almost 800 champions in the game, right? Um, yeah, almost 800 champions in the game. And I've got about 400 of them six star. That is about half. And that's not enough for me to be able to clear every rotation. So champion development, we need to make sure we're looking at leveling champions up, right? So taking advantage of every single um, champion training event, right? Champion training tournaments, right? Um, when we should be playing champions, right? It's always been the best thought of when you get to end game, you're looking at more of a 10x or particular you know now that we have the 15x using that as your preferred method to pull because you've got enough champions 
but for more of the underdeveloped accounts that don't have them, the two X's are still probably your best ones. Or if you're tracking your mercy, something like what we currently have now, which is the, you know, pull one, get one is also a good one. And then you also need to pay attention to booking champions. Try to invest in the champions that you're going to have them in multiple areas of the game, right? And make sure that, you know, you're not just using one champion for this. And, and look at the skill kit and see, does it really need to be booked, right? Last rotation, I managed to do quite a bit of Centranos with budget builds on champions that I actually got the six-starred, mastered, um, but did not book out um, or didn't need to. So look at the overall skill kit of the champion. 90% of the time, 99% of the time, they're going to need to be a six star fully um, ascended, right? And some of the skills may or may not need to be booked. So just take a, you know, take a little bit of time, look at the skill kit, read it over. If you need help, always feel free to reach out in Discord. But champion development is going to be the biggest one. So knowing when to pull, knowing which champions to build, knowing which champions to book, right? Those are going to be the big things. Number three. This is going to be the biggest challenge you have, and that is because you probably don't have enough gear on your account, but it is actually gearing the champions and gearing them properly. What am I talking about? Well, let's take a look at some of these champions, right? For example, stun sets, savage sets, bolster, and, you know, regen sets are going to be some of the best sets you need in this content. But what sets do you need to use on which champions? We'll do some in-depth guides on, you know, each particular set on what is best to use them for. But let's take a look at my Deli uh well, Delian is not a good one, but let's take a look at my Drang, right? Drang's got A2 skills, which is AoE, right? Um, his A3 is a single target and his A1 hits twice. Because that A2 is an AoE. I use them in a stun set, right? He's not fully booked. And so I took that into account and I said, okay, stun set's going to be what I need to use them with. It makes the most sense, right? Other champions, like let's say I needed to build myself um, Morgan. I had to build her in a savage set, even though she is a great candidate because she does have attacks all enemies on her A2 um two times right so she would be a decent candidate for a stun set but she is more base of a damage set right she's more of a damage dealer so champions like this knowing which sets to gear them in and which sets to put them in is going to be key right um and again i will do a more in-depth guide on each set uh probably sometime within the next week i'll try to keep them nice and short and sweet but gearing champions gearing them the right way and only having to gear them one time Right? You don't want to be that guy that keeps pulling gear off of champion from champion to champion because then what you're going to end up with is something like me and I'm left with 1.5, almost 1.6 million silver and I still have an artifact enhancement event to do that ends today. Right, I still got to put up some points. So I got to figure out how I'm going to get those other 400 points with 1.5 million silver. So also on the gearing aspect, I want to talk about not being as strict with a lot of these gear sets, right? I know that in the end game, we're picky and beginning to be very, very picky with a lot of the sets that we're keeping and the substats. And so my usual thing is, is if it has two or more flat stats or stats that I don't want on a piece of gear, it's an automatic sell for me. I got to kind of revisit that right now because I don't have seven or eight savage sets or stun sets that are usable right and so i need to make sure that when i'm gearing them i'm having enough gear for every one of these sets because i don't want to keep pulling it off now a couple of things to take note of when you're building champions for centrano's hard mode you want to try to make sure you're doing three things the first thing is the minimum speed on most of these champions when you end up into Soul Cross is going to be 236. That's about the slowest or the fastest that um, the champions in game are going to be, right? Your opponent. And that's about the slowest you really want to be. Accuracy wise, 
the good range for this is going to be between 350 to 400, right? So if you have a debuffer that's going to come in, between 350 to 400 is the perfect number for um, accuracy. And resistance, you're going to want to look at 400 to 450. EHP defense, it's really going to depend on the champion and what they have. Always, if you can try to build them at 4200 defense, that's a solid number. A lot of the champions, no matter how hard you try, you're never going to get to that number. It's going to be very difficult. There's other things you can take into account, which is auras, buffs, um, you know, that can help you get to that number, but it's not always going to be logical. So I'm always shooting for about 34 to 3500 when I use my uh, builds for Centranos for defense. HP wise, I'm shooting for anywhere between 60 and above, right? Uh, and even at that point, 60 is kind of on the lower end, especially for Soul Cross. So takeaway from this is don't be too judgy on the gear. Take a second look at it. See if maybe it'll help you complete a set that you need with the proper substats to be able to complete a stage or complete a build for a particular champion. The next one I want to touch up on is the Masteries. Masteries and Citranos are huge, right? We have champions that need to be built because it's either going to provide them with turn meter boost, right? You have arcane celerity, which is great. You have rapid response, which is even greater, depending on how many buffs or debuffs you put. You have oppressor, right? Uh, you have timely intervention. You also have uh, cycle of revenge. So it provides a lot of turn meter boost for you to be able to get to your cooldowns faster. Um, or increase your speed to be able to land more stuns or whatever it might be that the champion needs. It provides the stat boost, right? You get five crit rate out of deadly precision, keen strike, you get some extra crit damage. Um, you can take defiant and get some resistance. You could take steadfast, get some extra HP. You could even go down to elixir of life, which I wouldn't have suggested for a lot of these builds and get some extra HP there, or you could be going down to Eagle Eye and take some extra accuracy there, depending on exactly what your build needs, or even go down to Flawless Execution and take some extra crit damage. Again, it's depending on whatever the build needs, so it provides that stat boost. It provides an enhancement to your abilities. Example, Shield Barrier, right? Increasing the value of shields that you place is great for a champion like a Melga, right? She has a shield, she places it on everybody and increases the value. Champions like Stella the Drakes would be great on Lay on Hands, increases the heals that she gives out by 5%. She has a passive that gives you good healing every time she takes a turn. So again, it helps keep the sustainability up and gives you a little more um, boost to your abilities. And then last, it gives you a damage boost. Gives you a damage boost because you have Helm Smasher, you have Giant Slayer, you have War Master, right? Um, there's other masteries you could take, like Methodical or Kill Streak, that will help you increase the damage that you take or that you give out to you know your opponent. So it's definitely a must, right? Without being able to cause enough damage, yeah, you might be able to get through some of the builds without having that, but 90% of the time your champions are going to want to be mastered. And then the last thing, it provides a cooldown reduction. You get cooldown reductions like Cycle of Magic, and you get cooldown reductions like Cycle of Violence, right? Depending on how many, how much damage you put out, right? If it exceeds 30%, then, you know, your champion is going to have a, you know, 30% chance. So one in three chances to be able to reduce the cooldown, which is almost like a built-in um what is it called uh uh forget what that set's called <laughs> reflex set if you can pump out enough damage right um and then again cycle of magic is kind of the same thing you have a five percent chance of decreasing the random skill cooldown even though it's not great for amius it is great for a lot of the other stages if my miscreated monster or my juliana can do an ability again every so often earlier then hey that's great the last part is going to be blessings. Now, unfortunately, I almost didn't really want to cover this because this is kind of the pay to win side of having this content out. Um, you know, if you've if you've played a while, players like Final Kampachi, 
that have been playing for four years as free to play have built a champion roster over time that you know could get most of this stuff done if they build some of these champions right but then the pay to win side of it is the stones unfortunately you know i don't buy them um i can't say i've never bought them, but i don't usually buy them i've got 30 saved up from doing my challenges right so anytime i see a mortal soul stone up for grabs i try to get it anytime i see any of these coins i try to get them um even if it's just that part that I'm going to be doing on the event, right? Because they play such a huge role in Centranos. They offer us damage boost, right? With Brimstone. They offer us survivability on Amius because of however many um, blessings you have on them, you get less damage taken. And they offer, you know, a lot of stat boost for crit rate, crit damage. Uh, depending on whatever else your champion might need, depending on how many blessings you have. Now with this, you got to really prioritize what your account needs, right? Look at what you currently have. And you're going to see here, I actually still am holding, I used to be the guy that sold everything that was less than a three star. Because my thought process was, and it was a bad idea to be honest, I will sell anything below a three star because I'll never use it and I'd rather just buy it out of the shop, right? get my coins back. And that's kind of a bad idea. Even putting a two star or three star is going to start bringing in through the soul merchant, some other ones, right? Even just buying a one star out of here can help you start building towards that end game stage, right? Because remember now this is only hard mode. They are going to be coming out with another mode. And my worry for that one's going to be you know, are we going to start requiring 25 blessings? And that I don't think I could do on my account, right? And I have a pretty decent roster um, blessings wise. If we take a look at what I currently have, you're going to see it's not a lot. Um, and <laughs> quite honestly, like I have, I have some legendary champions that have like five star and four star. I don't think I have a single legendary champion that's got a six star, to be honest, right? Most of them are four star, five star, or under. As for epic champions, though, I did put them as a priority. So when I see them in the shop, I buy them, right? They're a hell of a lot cheaper than the 300 bars, than the 300 coins that I'm going to need. Same thing for the rare champions. Rare champions, I think, are like 30 or something like that. So they're still a hell of a lot cheaper than the legendary champions. And some rare champions, to be honest, in certain cases are going to be better than legendary champions. So, Blessings is the last one. That is it, guys. This is everything that you need to focus on or should focus on if you want to progress through some channels, whether it's this rotation, next rotation, or moving into the, you know, Brutal or Nightmare, whatever rotation might be coming up in the next couple of months. Because remember, we are getting that next rotation. But trying to get out of Cabo Market, going into Dead Rise or Soul Cross or Plague Lands, those are going to be some of the things you want to focus on to progress your account. Let me know in the comments down below if I did forget any. Um, I'm pretty sure I covered everything. I went a little more in depth than I wanted to on some of the, the categories. Uh, if you do have any questions, please always feel free to reach out in Discord if you need help. Um, I can help you out. Uh, I don't charge for any of the help that I give out. Now, what I do want to say is if you guys already haven't, make sure to join us every Sunday for the Knights of Teleria at 2 p.m. EST, where you get myself, Gesto Gaming, Final Compache, JR Star 3, Nacho Place 50, along with Jared Gaming, where we talk everything Rage Shadow Legends. We talk about the good, the bad, the ugly. We have some friendly banter, and you get to see the perspective of multiple players, whether we're pay to win, free to play, end game, early game, mid game, and kind of helps out understanding how you should progress your account and how every other player out there might be going through a couple of different things that you might be. As always, guys, much love, much appreciation. Be safe, be well, be good to each other, and I'll catch you guys next time.